Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 1, Tutorial 19b on accounting for non-monetary asset exchanges with commercial substance. This is the second of two tutorials focusing on non-monetary asset exchanges. Tutorial 19a focused on such exchanges in situations without commercial substance. We have one basic learning objective here, and that is to review the accounting for non-monetary asset exchanges where commercial substance is present, as opposed to the previous tutorial where commercial substance was not present. Recall, commercial substance is a situation where, after the exchange, the economic position of the company is significantly altered, and that's usually determined by the cash flows associated with the asset. In the example that I had used in the previous tutorial, Exchanging a red truck for a blue truck won't result in commercial substance because this, of course, presumes that the trucks are pretty much the same model and have the same cash flows, maintenance, etc. But exchanging a truck for a plane, the result would be significantly different sets of cash flows and thus commercial substance would exist because the economic position of the company would be significantly altered. This example continues on with the Chekhov and Sulu example, focusing on requirement two, now where we have to record the required journal entries for the exchange where commercial substance does exist. We begin with trying to determine what the value of the new asset is, so a debit to the new equipment. We don't know yet how much it'll be, but we can figure that out. Essentially, in situations of commercial substance, the value of the new asset is the fair value of the old asset plus or minus any cash paid or received. So in our situation, the fair value of the old asset that Chekhov is giving up is $95,000. And Chekhov is paying Sulu an additional 25,000. This means that the fair value of the old asset is $120,000. The test to make sure that we are not recording too high a value is still to compare this fair value of assets basically given up compared to the fair value of the new asset. And so this 120,000 is less than 130,000, which is the fair value of the new asset. So we're okay with recording this at 120,000 because the fair value of the assets given up is less than the fair value of the new asset. If you hadn't noticed by now that the key difference between situations of commercial substance and non-commercial substance is that with commercial substance, we use the fair value of the old asset versus the fair value of the new one. But in a situation where we do not have commercial substance, we were using the book values or the carrying values of the old assets, plus or minus cash received, and then comparing that to the fair value of the new asset. So we've debit the equipment for 120000 these three line items in our journal entries are the same. We still are crediting equipment for 205000 debiting accumulated depreciation for 92500 and crediting cash for 25000 because Chekhov is paying Sulu an additional amount of cash. And then here we can simply plug our journal entry. To make a balance, we have a loss on disposal of 17500 and that's the result then basically of just taking our 25000 in cash plus 205,000 cost of the old equipment, less the accumulated depreciation of 92,500, less $120,000 of the new equipment brought in. Now we can prove this. We have the fair value of the old asset that Chekhov is giving up. Uh, the fair value is $95,000, less the book value of the $95,000 asset that Chekhov is giving up of 112,500, leaves us with a net loss of 17500 on the exchange. Now over to Sulu Corp, where we begin with a debit to new equipment. However, the value of the new equipment brought on will depend on our uh, test or assessment based on commercial substance. So in the case of commercial substance, the value of the new asset, so the asset being acquired, is equal to the fair value of the old asset that's being given up, plus or minus any cash paid or received. In this case, Sulu is receiving an additional $25,000, and so you'll see that that is going to offset the fair value of the old asset going out. So what we have is Sulu is giving up an asset with a fair value of $130,000, and Sulu is receiving cash of $25,000. Therefore, the net 
fair value of the asset going out is $105,000. However, the fair value of the asset being received is $95,000. And so the $105,000 is greater than the $95,000 of the asset being received. And we cannot record the new asset at any more than its fair value. Therefore, the new asset must be recorded at its fair value of $95,000. Simple line items for accumulated depreciation gets a debit of $70,920. Equipment, the $197,000 credit. And cash gets the $25,000 debit. And the amount to make the journal entry balance is $6,080. Of course, $197 minus $95. 1,000, 70, 920, and 25,000. But that's also a provable number. As we can see here, our proof, again, the fair value of the old asset, 130,000, less the book value of that asset, 126,080. And then you'll see here, there's a fair value adjustment that brings the asset down because we determined that the fair value of the equipment given up is 105,000, but that is greater than the 95,000, which we have to record the thing at. And so we have a $10,000 loss. Basically, that is a result of the adjustment to fair value because the fair value of the asset coming in is less than the fair value of the asset going out. In essence, this proves our loss of $6,080. And once again, here they are side by side. No changes to this information, just presenting them right next to each other so you can see the differences. And now we can wrap up with some key points to remember. When commercial substance is present, the value of the incoming or the new asset is equal to the fair value of the outgoing asset plus or minus any cash. And that's different from commercial substance not being present where we were using the carrying value of outgoing assets. Now this does allow for gains and losses on exchanges of what we used to call dissimilar assets, but basically assets with differing economic and cash impact. You know, a gas pickup truck in exchange for a diesel cube van. Both of them are vehicles and carry loads. However, a gasoline pickup truck may not hold as much as a large cube van, and the gasoline costs more in the long run to operate than does a diesel vehicle. So this concludes tutorial 19b. We hope you found these tutorials useful.